Hey, 7th graders. Um, so before I dive completely into this video, um, if you guys could do me a giant favor and when you watch this, um, even actually if you're not in 7th grade, um, whatever grade you're in, um, leave a comment telling me what time you guys normally like log on to start your schoolwork. Um, because I'm looking at switching to like a later time to do live streams. Um, not any later than like the six to seven slot I already do, but maybe for the sixth graders doing something a little later. Um, so please let me know what time you normally log on to do your work. Um, because I want to make sure you guys are getting the instruction and stuff that you need. And it's not like you're waking up super early in the morning or you are staying up all night and you can't wake up on time um, to get your work done. Um, so I'm going to be reading pages 200 through 202, which are the last couple pages of your, um, informational packet. Um, this is for the seventh grade. Um, so I'm first going to read these two little passages on page 200, and then we will jump right into the questions. Um, again, I will not be going live again for the seventh and eighth grade until April 15th which is after spring break. Um, so next week there will be no live session because we are on spring break. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, if you guys want to email me, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me over spring break because I will still be checking my email like once or twice a day. Um, so I won't be getting back to you as quickly as I normally do, but I will still get back to you guys. Um, or you can hold all your questions off until we go live in two weeks. It's up to you. Um, but here we go. Outgrowing our food and water. The latest United Nations world population projection shows continued increases through the year 2100. The 2013 world population of 7.2 billion will increase to 8.1 billion by 2025 and will further increase to 9.6 billion in 2050 and 10.9 billion by 2100. According to the UN report, almost all of the increase will come in developing countries. These nations have such a higher birth rate than those in already developed countries. About half of the population increase will come from only seven countries. Uh, Nigeria, India, Tanzania, Congo, uh, Uganda, and Ethiopia. Why are these figures important? As the human population increases, it will use more resources. The growing population will need more food and more water, and it is not always clear where these resources will come from. For example, a major UN aim since 1990 has been increasing the number of people who have access to clean drinking water. Its program has been very successful at cutting the percentage of people without clean water from 24% to 11%. However, that still leaves 783 million people with no regular source of clean water. 40% of those people live in sub-Saharan Africa, in the countries where population is growing fastest. A similar situation, situation exists for food resources. The largest number of hungry people lives in developing countries with high population growth. The earthers are only home. In the next century, controlling world population growth will be of prime importance. But that effort must go hand in hand with innovative techniques in food production and water purification. Orbital space colonies. Space colonies are permanent communities in orbit as opposed to existing on the moon or on other planets. Such colonies are technically feasible, although expensive. Settlers of this high frontier would live inside large airtight rotating structures. These colonies would include thousands or even millions of people. They would also have animals, plants, and single cell organisms vital to com comfort and survive. Why should colonies be in orbit? Mars and our moon have a surface gravity far below Earth normal. Children raised in low G will not develop bones and muscles strong enough to visit Earth comfortably. In contrast, orbital colonies can be rotated to provide Earth normal pseudo-gravity in the main living areas. There are many advantages to living in orbit, zero-G recreation, environmental independence, plentiful solar energy, and terrific views to name a few. There is plenty of room for everyone who wants to go. The materials from a single asteroid can build space colonies with living space equal to about 500 times the surface of the Earth. Um, so those are the two passages on page 200. 
we're going to move over to page 201 and start on the multiple choice questions. Um, so 1A, in orbital space colonies, what is the author's purpose for including paragraph 3? So we're looking at the last paragraph on page 200. Um, A, to predict the future of colonies. B, to summarize details about colonies. C, to give reasons that humans would like would like the colonies, or D, to give specific examples of the be benefits of um, colonies. One word to look at in that paragraph is advantage. <coughs> so try to um, find a word or find your answer that goes along with advantages, maybe a synonym for advantages. Um, so then 1B, what clue from the text supports the answer to part A? Um, a, many advantages to living in orbit, B, environmental independence, C, plentiful solar energy, or D, plenty of room for everyone. Um, I just kind of gave you the answer for 1B when I was describing the answer for 1A, um, so I'm not going to help you more than that. 2A, in outgrowing our food and water, what purpose does paragraph 3 serve? A, it defines population increase. B, it gives reasons for population increase. C, it gives examples of other population increases, or D, it explains why population increase is important. Um, so again, reread paragraph three. It's about four, three, four sentences. Um, that is for the outgrowing our food and water paragraph. Um, 2B, what clue from the text supports the answer to part A? A, why are these figures important? B, as the human population increases, it will use more resources. C, the growing population will need more food and water. D, it is not always clear where these resources will come from. Um, so keep in mind when you're answering 2A and 2B what the first sentence of a paragraph normally does. Think back to when you guys were writing your um, most recent essays or the bug essays. Um, so moving on to 3A. In outgrowing our food and water, what is the author's point of view? A. Controlling population will solve humanity's problems. B. Developing countries will dominate the world by 2100. C. Population growth can continue without any special controls. Or D. Humans must control population and develop food and water supplies. Um, so again, you are looking at the author's point of view for the first text on page 200. Um, I looked more so to find my answer for this at paragraphs four and five, like what are the messages that paragraphs four and five are sending to you. Um, for 3b, which paragraph of the text best supports the answer to part a? A, paragraph two, B, paragraph three, C, paragraph four, or D, paragraph five? Um, again, it's going to be C or D because you're focusing more on the messages that you hear and see in paragraphs four and five. Um, for a, what is the best evaluation of the solution to overpopulation presented in orbital space colonies? So you're looking at the second passage. Um, A, it is based on solid facts. B, it is speculation about the future. C, it is judgment based on research. Or D, it is a false idea that could never happen. Um, so I recommend if you guys are kind of confused about this one, um, it's based on solid facts. Um, they don't really reference any like scientists or researchers that have researched this, so I would not go with A. Um, B, it is a speculation about the future. Um, it does kind of seem like someone's like, well, based off what I know, like this could be possible. Um, C, it is a judgment based on research. Um, again, I would say this is a judgment, but there's not necessarily research that we know of to back it up. Or D, it is a false idea that can never happen. Um, Again, I don't think that it's a false idea, and I think it might not be totally realistic, but who's to say it won't actually happen? Um, and then 4B, what knowledge about the information in orbital space colonies supports the answer to part A? A, astronauts have gone to the moon. B, none of these things have happened yet. C, both the moon and Mars have been explored. Or D, no humans can live anywhere except on Earth. Um, so depending on what you select for 4A, your answer for 4B will differ, so I'm not really going to help you with that one. Um, 5A, which is an example of figurative language in orbital space colonies? Um, A, technically feasible. B, settlers of this high frontier. C, vital to comfort and survival. Or D, permanent communities in orbit. Um, this one is actually kind of tricky because it doesn't really jump out to you. Um, so A, technically feasible, 
I didn't select that one because it's just kind of a weird phrase from a sentence. Um, B, settlers of this high frontier. I chose um, B because it's kind of like an illusion. You have to know like how or what settlers are, how they get places, how they take over land. Um, C, vital to comfort and survival. Again, that's not figurative. Like you need to survive and be comfortable. Um, and D, permanent communities in orbit. Um, again, that doesn't really have anything to do with figurative language either. So moving on to the last page, 202. Um, 5B, what kind of figurative language is the answer to part A? Um, this one is super confusing too because I didn't feel like the answer I chose jumped straight out to me. Um, I will tell you guys though, think of the definitions of each of these. Um, a metaphor, you're saying the thing is. So if I, an example of a metaphor would be, you are a tall tree. You're comparing the person's height to a tall tree, but you're just saying that they are the tall tree. Um, simile is using like or as to compare things. So if I said you are as tall as that tree. Um, and then personification is giving human-like qualities to non-living things. So if I said the trees danced in the wind. Trees don't actually dance. Um, that leaves you with A, hyperbole, um, which hyperbole can be like an exaggeration. Um, so think of the definitions of when you are of these four types of figurative language when you answer this one. So 6A, in orbital space colonies, what does the phrase zero G mean? A, no grade, B, no sound, C, no gravity, or D, no rotation. Um, it's zero G, so I would choose between A or C because grade and gravity will start with um, G. 6B, what clues provide the answer to part A? A, the text mentions gravity and low G. B, the text mentions colonies with millions of people. C, the text men mentions zero G recreation or D. The text mentions children being raised in low G places. Um, again, your answer for 6B will vary depending on what you select for 6A. Um, okay, moving on to the last four questions. Number seven, although these two texts discuss different topics, how are their purposes similar? Um, so think of what they're trying to um, inform you about. They are both, I think, informative texts. But think about what they're trying to inform about. Like think of the really, really general topic that applies to both of these. Um, number eight, the prefix pro means before and the Latin root ject means to throw. Which word in outgrowing our food and water has this Latin prefix and root? Um, FYI, I found my answer for that in paragraph one of outgrowing our food and water. Number nine, describe how the author of Outgrowing Our Food and Water organized the text. Um, so you are going to look at like chronological, cause and effect, problem solution, um, stuff like that for the text structure. You guys have been going over different text structures throughout this entire packet. Um, number 10, both texts have a paragraph that begins with a why question. Write a paragraph explaining the purpose of the question in each text. So why does the author ask a question? Um, don't tell me it's as an attention getter because that's a really obvious one. Um, but what are they trying to tell you or explain to you or what do they want you to infer with that why question? Um, so keep that in mind as you answer number 10. Um, but that is the entire informational text packet. Um, oh geez. Um, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions about it, um, Again, we won't be going live for another two weeks, so if you have questions, feel free to email me, um, comment on the video, comment on the Google Classroom. Um, if you guys are still struggling to get into the Google Classroom, let me know. I'll help you. Um, but that is all I have for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoy your spring break next week.